everybody and welcome to Tuesday Training. I hope you're having a fantastic week. As always, we are live from Austin, Texas, right here at Insurance Syndicate headquarters. And man, we have a great show for you. Good morning. What is going on, man? Welcome back for Tuesday Training. As always, we are here at 9 a.m. live because that's how we do it. 9 a.m. Central Time. We do it right here at Austin, uh, Texas. It's Syndicate headquarters, man. So, And to say that, any of you guys that are ever in the Austin area, you want to come check out Syndicate headquarters, see what we're all about, tie into the culture, hang out, spend some time here in the juice. Come on, man. We got flex offices. We got space for it. We'd love to have you in uh, and uh, and check out the space. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. I spent my Labor Day weekend laboring, as I'm sure many of you did. Uh, If some of you follow me on social media, uh, you know that we're still kind of in the process of revamping, I should say, or rehabbing my parents' house to get it ready for sale. Uh, so it's been a long project. We're we're in the DIY space of it for the most part. So spent my whole weekend helping lay down floors, doing some painting, doing landscaping, cleaning, hauling off trash, all kinds of stuff to get this thing ready. So uh, that, that was pretty much my weekend. And getting ready for a busy September, man. Uh, I've got a date coming up this week where I will be in South Padre, uh, teaching a CE class with the South Texas NABIP chapter. NABIP is, of course, the National Association of Benefits and Insurance Professionals. So I will be down there coaching them up on my future of Medicare and getting them some CE credits, uh, hanging out with that group. Super excited. They're doing kind of a pirate theme right there in South Padre. So that should be a blast. Uh, and then obviously we're rolling right in to AEP getting ready this September. So lots of stuff. I do a little bit of news before we jump into our guest. Some of these articles I'm about to show you, I just got a couple of them uh, or three of them actually that I just want to run through real quick. I've already posted them in the group. So if you're there in Insurance Syndicate, you can find these articles in the group. In the group. Uh, but I just want to bump through them real quick. Bear with me. Let me get these on screen for you. And uh, as always, you know, if you got some questions, you got some comments, get them up on screen. We would love to hear from you. So I hope you guys are doing out there. Fantastic, man. Get your comments in the group. I want to talk to you, see who's here listening, paying attention. As always, Joe Campert's in the house. As always, Melissa Osherman in the house, man. Thank you all for tuning in. Let me grab this on screen for you guys, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So first one is this this article from Kaiser Family Foundation. Um, I've talked about Kaiser Family a lot on this show, man. If you're in the Medicare space, if you're in the health insurance space, if you're in the ACA space, you should definitely be following the articles that Kaiser Family Foundation puts out. They put out excellent articles, excellent surveys, analysis, uh, white papers, whatever you want to call it, all about the ACA and Medicare space, Social Security, Medicaid, all kinds of stuff. And this is an article that came out on August 1st. Again, it is in the group. It is probably the best overall summary of the Inflation Reduction Act and how it's uh, affecting Medicare Part D program. Probably the best one I've seen so far. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I want to point out a few key items on it. And again, this is in the group, so you can certainly run through this uh, and talk about it. But again, it's, it's going to be centered on the Inflation Reduction Act how it has effects on 2022 or on, I'm sorry, it started in 2022, how it has effects on Medicare Part D going forward. So uh, running through just a bit of it, obviously they got it all key takeaways here, right? We know that changes to the Part D benefit in the Inflation Reduction Act will mean lower out of pocket for Part Ds at the pharmacy. Uh, There are some uh, higher costs, it says, probably in premium increases, which it says right there. And we already know that there's been some articles and some steps taken to mitigate those increases, what they're talking about in this second takeaway, right? We know that they put out the uh, premium stabilization demonstration program, which Part D carriers can uh, volunteer uh, to participate in to help them get higher subsidies so they can keep their Part D plan premiums lower, right? Uh, That includes a cap on the base premium, 
Remember, the base premium isn't the average premium that people are paying. The base premium is what they use to calculate the Part D penalties on. So they are saying that, hey, in this Inflation Reduction Act, we cannot increase the base premium more than 6% 6 year over year. So we're seeing it go up a little bit uh, this year. But again, they've kind of got that measurement in to keep it low, and that'll help keep late enrollment penalties a little more uh, modest, so to speak. It's going to go through how it changes, right? All the different changes. We have a $2,000 cap on out-of-pocket drugs. We already know that we have a $35 cap on insulin. Those are all going into effect in 2025 completely. Uh, and then in 2026, there's some additional changes. And they lay it out right here, uh, what's been going on for the last couple of years. This is specifically, this little chart here shows you who is paying what when it comes to the cost of the prescription itself. Right back in 2023, if you're in catastrophic coverage, the Part D enrollees are paying 5%. Part D plans are paying 15 and Medicare is paying 80%. So it's been a big toll on Medicare. And that was the original idea behind the Inflation Reduction Act. Like, hey, we've got to reduce the expenses of Medicare on this. And that's been a big push of it is to reduce the responsibility on Medicare shoulders for the cost of these drugs and push it more to the enrollees and more importantly to the Part D plans themselves. So you will see uh, that Part D plans are definitely taking over a much larger uh, cost share when it comes to these drugs. And the second part about it is obviously with Medicare now uh, negotiating these costs for drugs to get a better price overall. They released the top 10 a few weeks ago. I put those in the group. But if you go on and you look in 2025, this is what we're up against for next year. And this is why we're seeing a lot of things that we're seeing, right? Um, unless you're living under a rock, but if you're in some of these Medicare groups that are out there on Facebook and they're talking about what's happening in the space, we already know that there's carriers that are pulling out of the marketplace, right? I'll tell you two right up front, uh, Mutual Omaha said, hey, no more. We're out of the Part D market, uh, which not really a big deal in my opinion. They weren't a big player, but they said, hey, look, we can't continue to compete in this marketplace with the new downward pressures that are happening. Uh, Kansas City Blue, Pulled out of the entire market 100%. No Medicare Advantage plans, no Part D plans, no nothing. They're out. And it's because of this downward pressure that's happening. So I think we'll continue to see that. Uh, there's already people talking about plan exits in different states. WellCare is pulling out of six states in total. Uh, Alabama's having some massive disruptions with all kinds of carriers that are pulling out of that market, uh, especially in the PPO space, uh, which is in a lot of those rural areas of Alabama. We're seeing some major disruption, but going into 2025, man, if you look at this, this is where it's coming from, right? In catastrophic coverage, now the drug plans have to take on a 60% responsibility. They have to take on a 65% responsibility in initial coverage. So you'll see that kind of flip-flop, right? Back in 2023, they only had to cover 15% and Medicare covered 80. Going in the next year, the carriers have to cover 60% of catastrophic and Medicare is only covering 20. Um, so that extra responsibility is where we're seeing a lot of these problems from, because not only are they having to cover more of the drug costs, but then they are capped on how much they can charge the consumer for that drug. So they can only get $2,000 out of them in total out-of-pocket cost, right? Insulin's capped at 35. So does it take a rocket surgeon and I've been saying this for a couple of years now, that if you're going to take money from one side of the equation, you're going to have to put it in on the other side of the equation. So that's where that came in, uh, where we're seeing the bids for Part D drug plans go up 300 percent. And now they've got that premium uh, stabilization model put in there. And this is exactly why. And this is why companies like WellCare are no longer paying commissions on drug plans, et cetera. Uh, it's, this is a big part of it. So. I'm going to scroll through a little bit more of this, right? It, again, this article, it's outstanding. If you really want to get a good grasp on what is going on with the Inflation Reduction Act, how it's going to affect drug plans, et cetera, et cetera, this is the article for you because uh, it goes through everything, right? This is some of the new risk corridors that they're putting in place. Um, it furthers down, it talks about the premium stabilization model. And right here is where I was talking about it where we saw the average monthly bid jump from $64.28 all the way to $179.45. So when, that, when those bids came in on July 29th, CMS put out basically an emergency memo that said, hey, we're going to introduce 
the Part D premium stabilization model, which now puts new caps. Basically, in, in the easiest way to say it, it's going to add in a new subsidy of an average, their average expectations, about $142 and change uh, per member per month. It's a lot of money, uh, but that will keep the premiums down closer to around that base premium. We're still going to see some jumps. Uh, and I'm really curious to see what happens with some of these plans that had, say, a 50 cent uh, copay or a 50 cent premium or a $1 premium. I'm really interested to see what those are going to look like for next year. I have yet to see the new premiums on those plans, but I assume they're obviously going to be higher. Um, and then one of the big caps is now, if you're in the premium stabilization model, you cannot raise your drug plan premium more than 35 bucks a month. So it wouldn't surprise me to see everybody get that $35 included. So I would expect, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would expect the vast majority of drug plans are probably going to see a $35 increase in their premium or something very close to it. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but again, we will see. I've already seen some pretty interesting changes where carriers that were offering, say, three drug plans in the past are now only offering one. And instead of it being maybe $7 or $24, that one plan is now $45 as an example. I'm seeing a lot of that consolidation where they're not offering as many plans. They're thinning it down. So again, check this article out. It's already in the group. They're, it's going to go through all of the details. Again, I'm not going to go through everything because it would take the entire show. I just want to kind of scroll through it a little bit and give you an idea of what's on here. So check that one out. Like I said, it's in the group. And I've got one more uh, from Kaiser Family Foundation. <clears throat> this is a summary that they put out on August 8th. And this talks about everything that we saw in Medicare Advantage for 2024, not 2025. This isn't talking about 2025 AEP. This is summarizing all of the data from 2024. Excellent stuff because it's going to really give you an idea of the demographics of the population of Medicare, who's enrolled in Medicare Advantage, what do they look like, how many are in this, how many are in that. So as an example, right up here at the highlight, it says that in 2024, 75% of enrollees were in an individual Medicare Advantage plan with drug coverage that pay no premium other than the Part B premium. I don't think that's a big shocker. Nearly all enrollees are in plans that require prior authorization. I don't know that that's a big shocker either. But again, this entire article will break down the demographics of Medicare Advantage, who's enrolled in it, what types of plans they're enrolled in, and so forth. This is in the group as well. Uh, so you can certainly grab it and check it out and get yourself educated up uh, as we get ready to roll in. This one pretty interesting here. The average out-of-pocket limit for Medicare Advantage enrollees is $4,800 for in-network, $8,700 for out-of-network. That doesn't say how much they're spending. That's just the average moops that plans are setting, right? So definitely check this one out. And then before I want one more I want to show you, and then we will jump into the meat of the show that I'm super excited about. So find one, final one, and I just put this in the group this morning. Pardon me. It's called The Future of Medicare Advantage. And this was put out by a research group, uh, McKinsey, uh, and goes through some excellent stuff on what we're going to see in the future and more how the carriers can take advantage of it. And they believe that star power is going to be the way that if plans want to consider to do well, perform well, get membership, et cetera, they're going to have to focus on getting their star ratings up. And I kind of agree with that because I, I definitely try to, I hate to use the word steer because <laughs> we're not supposed to be steering people, but I definitely try to push people if I can towards higher rating plans that I know we're going to perform better for them, right? Plans that are four, four and a half, and certainly five stars. Uh, so this article is going to go through some great detail. Uh, I'm going to pick through this pretty heavy because I want to incorporate some of this in my talk that I'm giving in uh, South Padre later this week. Uh, but another outstanding article, you're going to see this one in the group. It goes through a lot. Provider engagement, member engagement, maximizing health equity index. <clears throat> Uh, it's going to give you ideas on how they can maintain better quality experience using automation, digital tech. Uh, and then it will continue to cruise down on payer considerations, product reset, which is kind of the space that we're in right now. Uh, and it gets into a lot of the data on the aging population, so forth and so forth. And then I'm just going to give you the final little piece that they say here. And it says, 
that we expect trends discussed in this article will deepen disruptions for MA payers in the next few months and next rounds of financial results will be telling about which payers have anticipated these changes successfully, setting them up for success in years to come. So some great articles, man. If you want to educate yourself, get yourself ready for AEP. Those are three really good articles that you can jump into uh, to help you out. So, And I'm a big proponent of education in this game. We already know that Medicare is such a deep, complex topic. Uh, it used to be one of those industries, like when I got started in back in 04, 05, and 06, it used to be one of those industries where you could kind of side hustle Medicare. Because it was really only a couple of products. You basically had Medicare supplements and some really crappy dental plans. Uh, and then it was final expense. And that was pretty much all you could sell. Fast forward to now and you look in a state like Texas, you've got 65 different Medicare supplement plans to pick from. And actually 65 different carriers, I should say. All of which have plans A, F, G, and N generally. Uh, you got about 60 different Medicare Advantage plans depending on the county. Drug plans, DSNPs, etc. It's gotten more complex. Um, so if you're an agent in the Medicare space, there's a pretty good chance that that's about the only product that you're running. Maybe you're doing some ACA, but for the most part, all you're doing is Medicare and the products that are centered around Medicare, right? Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage, drug plans, dental plans, hospital indemnity, home health care, short-term care, cancer, stroke, heart, all of that stuff. Um, but it's harder and harder for a Medicare agent to get outside of that box and really become an expert in other lanes of the business as well. So. Uh, with that said, get yourself educated and make sure you can run like I do, long obedience in one simple direction. So with all of that said, man, I hope I, again, appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you had a great Labor Day. We're going to bring on a buddy of mine that I want to chat with and talk to about because, again, this is the time of year that a lot of Medicare agents are out there in pharmacies. They're out there at expo halls, running events. They're doing all kinds of things where they're setting up a booth as kind of like a trade show. Right to talk to people about their wares, their services, uh, and, and certainly drum up some permission to contact so that you can generate sales. And the gentleman that we are going to bring on is absolutely that and then some. I met him the first time that I really got to know him uh, was at the Medicarians event, the very first Medicarians event, where the, uh, the after party was a rotation of 90s rappers. Uh, you had the guy from Sugar Ray. We had Tone Loke. Uh, Rob Bass, uh, who else was there? Uh, Young MC. And him and I had a really good time there, but I'd met him, you know, previously I'd seen him at events because every insurance event I go to, this dude is there. And I remember there was a period that I attended 26 events in a period of 12 months, uh, which is nuts. This dude was at every event I showed up to. I thought I was the road warrior, but this dude is at every single one of those 26 events. And he has other events that he's going to. So I want to get him on and talk to you guys about like what it takes to man a good booth, what it takes to set up a good booth, identify the right show that you should be at, and how to make sure you're getting the maximum potential when you are running that. So if you don't already know Andrew Saxo with Remind the Media, this is the man that's the legend and the true road warrior himself. How you doing, buddy? Awesome, Tony. Thank you for the introduction. That was a blast, that Medicarians with uh, you, me, Rob Lowe, or Rob, uh, what was it? Uh, anyway, that was Rob amazing. Bass. Rob Bass, holy cow. Yes. How do I forget Rob Bass? But anyway, just an amazing time. Tony, you are the legend. I got to yeah. tell you, I'm a huge fan of the insurance syndicate, huge fan of all the content that you bring. You really are just one of the absolute most professional people in this industry. And we're grateful for our partnership with you. So thank, thank you, you for everything, man. Well, I'm a big fan of not only you as an individual, but Reminder Media as well. Obviously, I use them and we'll dump into that a little bit. But just take a quick moment. There's probably a few folks listening in. Maybe they haven't ever been to an event and seen your shining face sitting in the hallways uh, and talking to people. Or maybe they just don't know. But take a moment to say, hey, I'm Andrew Saxa. This is what I do. This is what I'm about. You bet. So again, my name is Andrew Sachs. I run the financial services division for Reminder Media. So SVP here at Reminder Media. I've been doing this for 10 years. Reminder Media has been around 20 years. Just celebrated our 20th year, actually, with the American Lifestyle Magazine. And I got to tell you, I think this is the most exciting industry, bar none. You know, if you can't get fired up that this is the group more than... Uh, likely is controlling $70 trillion worth of net worth wealth in this country, turning 65 at a clip of about 11,000, 12,000 every single day. 
with a mandated insurance product that everybody really and truly needs to be involved in, you're crazy. How do you not get excited about this industry? This is the best industry in the entire world. And then you have incredible people like you, like Joe, Joe Camper, like, uh, holy cow, Galen Hendricks, so many of these incredible people in this industry that really drive uh, knowledge and everything that you're doing, Tony, I think is absolutely incredible. Well, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. How long, how long have you been with Reminder Media? 10 years. So 10 yeah, years. coming up on my, on my decade and you hit the nail on the head, you know, I mean, I'll go out to maybe 30 to 50 conferences this year. I like to do it. A lot of people don't like to do it, but I'll be honest with you. There's no better way to find out what's really going on in the industry. Also to hear testimonials from your existing clients. Also to learn what are their challenges? You know, what keeps them up at night? So my goal, uh, each and every single one of these conferences, Tony, is like you said, get there early. Get yeah. there early, stay late, and uh, just bring as much energy as you possibly can and knowledge. So those are some of my quick 30, 30 to 50 in a year? Yes, sir. That's anywhere from like two and a half a month to almost one a week. Easily. Yep. How do you... All right. So first things first, I travel. I know there's other agents that travel and do things like how in the world do you manage a schedule like that? What are some of your tips or tricks on just like, okay, if I want to hit 50 events in a year to promote myself, how are you managing that? Well, you know, part of it, like you said, is kind of having a team and having a process, right? Okay. So, you know, we're blessed here at Reminder Media where we have about 380 employees. We have some incredible people that really take their job serious. So it's great when you have a team that can help you coordinate to which events are going on. Again, put your heads together. Look at the statistical data. What came from the event that I was at last year, the year before, the year before that? Mm. Were we trending in the right direction? What was some of the key takeaways? What's important about that event? And why should we continue to, uh, you know, sponsor these events? And, you know, a big part of that is, you know, having this incredible network like you, Tony. You know, if I can reach out to you, Tony, and say, hey, listen, what are you seeing this year that really stands out on your calendar as something that you think we should be at? And, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about NABIP, you know, uh, that's, you know, just an incredible organization. You know, we weren't even that familiar with them until you, to be honest right. with you. So, you know, again, just, uh, you know, it's nice to have a good network of folks like yourself that really and truly are industry experts, really do put their heart and soul into this. Boy, the content that you shared this morning is just such a great example. You don't get that stuff, you yeah. know, anywhere else. There aren't that many people that really do that deep dive. So again, kudos to you, Tony. Great, well, great, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, when you're looking at an event, I mean, in my opinion, the first thing that you would look at is target audience. Is my target audience going to be there? Beyond that, what are you looking at? decide, hey, do I, should I be here? Should I make a presence? What are some other things that you're kind of examining? So you nailed it, right? Number of uh, people that are there that are, you know, Medicare agents that really do take the business serious. That's important. You know, uh, that's one of the reasons why we love 8% nation. That's why we love Medicare con. That's why we love Medicare, Medicareans. Because again, these events are really the cream of the crop, all coming to sharpen their, their tool to really and truly have big impact. So we definitely look at that. I personally, since I run a lot of our enterprise, I look to who are the big partnerships that we can come in uh, alongside with and really help their agents grow their business. So when I see integrity, I'll be honest with you, I get excited. When I see a life, I do get excited. I think that these are great organizations. I think they're doing everything they possibly can to help their agents grow their business. So why would we not want to partner with them? So I do right. look at, you know, the bigger picture as well as who are the agents, right? Are you coming, Tony? Is Rebecca Davis going to be there? Medicare Misty or some of these people that are just incredible uh, what they're doing in the industry. Galen Hendricks, Christian Brindle. I mean, I could keep doing shout outs all day long. I already mentioned Cody. But boy, I'll tell you what. These are the people you want to go to their, their events because they really and truly eat, sleep, breathe this industry. And like I said, it's the best industry in the world. Agreed. Agreed on to, to being the best, man. I love the space. So you just said something that really struck me and you just started name dropping like, hey, I all these people. And 
what that shows me is that you're paying attention to the community that you're serving, right? You're getting to know them. These aren't just passers by, right? They're like, oh, maybe I'll sell something. Maybe I won't. Like there's a certain level of relationship building in what you're doing that is seems to be at a very high level. Thank so, you. I yeah. try. So now relate that. If you're think about this, if you're an agent and let's say you set up your booth in a pharmacy, right? I still think that applies. I mean, are you going to get to know every single person that community know? Or are they are they celebrities because they're because some of the people you named are people like me and Rebecca that travel and we see each other at events because we're all road warriors. But I'm trying to think of like, how can I as an agent sitting in a pharmacy or in an expo hall or somewhere have that same attitude of like, I really want to get to know these people personally and try to develop a relationship with them. Um, can you speak to that at all? Like, what are some of the things that you're doing to get that level of engagement from people? Yeah. So Let's talk about being at a pharmacy, right? If you're going to have an event there, maybe at a uh, Walgreens or Walmart or whatever. Again, basics, right? I want to get there early. I want to know who's going to help me set up this booth. I want to know who is the manager. I want to know if I run into an issue, who should I talk to? I, I, I want to know who those people are. I want to see what the environment looks like, right? I want to do everything I can to make the environment around my booth and be friends with the people that are around me, right? I mean, the person that's to the right of me, the person that's to the left of me, I want to respect them, right? I mean, we're all coming to these events. The last thing I want to do is somebody's walking by their booth, grab them before they have a chance to actually have a conversation with them. It's rude. It's the wrong thing to do. So I would do the same. I'd have that same mentality if I was in a Walmart, if I was, uh, you know, again, like you said, a CVS or uh, Rite Aid, if they're still around, I'm having a harder, harder time. Every time I have a Rite Aid, I'm like, man, do you guys, are you in business? Are you just pretending to be in business? But yeah, I anyway. remember Eckerd's drugs. I don't know. <laughs> that was old for yeah. sure. Yeah. But anyway, so that's kind of my take on it, right? I mean, let's first and foremost familiar uh, learn about your environment, see who can help you there. And then from there, I want to do everything I can possibly do as well to be a good partner to you, to my people that, you know, are also spending good money there. To, and the other thing I would tell you is smile, man. Yeah. There is nothing worse than you see these people at their booth and they're frowning. They're looking straight down on their telephone. What are you doing? You know I mean? These folks, came here you should you should be excited you should have some fun with it this is such a great industry you know be excited to help people you know that's that's always my my number one motivating I, factor i see that from you every time like every time i go to an event it doesn't matter how many vendors are there like i've seen you at events where maybe there's only a small handful of vendors right and they didn't get as many or it's just a smaller event and i've seen you at bigger events like say 8% nation or medicare ins medicare con where there's literally tens of tens of you know almost 100 different sponsors and vendors and you're still one of the bright shining beacons in the group because every time i look down the gauntlet of vendors right you run down that hallway and there's vendors on every side of you that want to talk to you always you're never sitting down. You're always standing in front of your booth. You always have something in your hand. And you always have a giant <laughs> smile on your face. I feel like those are probably the three most important things. What, number one, you should never be sitting behind your booth. Number two, you should never have empty hands. And number three, you should always have a fat smile. Yeah, you Would nailed you, it. Wh why does that work? I mean, it seems obvious, but, you know, why are you always on point at that level? Because you're going to attract people, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I want to attract people and I want to, uh, you know, nobody wants to come up and, and start a conversation with somebody that's frowning, right? That's looking down at their phone. It's crazy. Why would you do that? That's insane. And on top of that, you spent all this money to be there. Why wouldn't you be excited about being there? The other thing too, the basics of blocking and tackle, take a mint, right? Make sure you got fresh breath. Man, I don't know what's going on with these conferences, but I feel like they always want to say for you something with onions. I'm like, dude, back off on the onions, man. I don't need the onions right now. Um, so I would tell you some basic common sense, right? Maybe hit yourself with a little bit of cologne so that you smell a little decent 
right? Again, standing up in a booth for 8, 10, 12 hours. Holy cow, man, running around like you and I run around, you know, where you really and truly are, you know, hustling. And most of the time I'm in a suit, you're in a suit. You know, I want to smell good. I want to, you know, have a great uh, attitude about everything as much as I can. Find. We're all human beings. I mean, things do happen in our life. But I'm here to tell you, man, if a booth tells you that you're supposed to be there at 7 a.m., get there at 630, do everything you can possibly do to really make that booth be a fantastic welcoming place to everybody to stop by, have a great attitude, do yourself a favor. Let's not check the news before you get involved doing this stuff as much as humanly possible. There's so much negativity out there. I'm going to shut that stuff out, man. I'm going to listen to people like, again, Tony Robbins or, you know, some, you, you know, somebody that really is a little uplifting that's going to give me the right mindset so that when I'm going to uh, go work that booth or maybe even get a chance to speak on a stage, I'm thinking about that, right? I'm thinking about how can I help you guys as opposed to, oh my gosh, all this crazy stuff that's going on in the world. I don't care. There's always stuff going on that's crazy. There's always going to be stuff that's going on that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, leave, leave that outside. Leave that outside when you get into the, the, the hall or the booth or the location, the pharmacy, the expo center, whatever it is, uh, and be dead focused on what you're doing at hand. Um, yeah. So you always, and, and I mentioned this, but you always have something in your hands, which is obviously your main product. And it's 100% makes sense for you in that space. But I believe that still translates. Like when we run booths uh, for Avila at the different flea markets or trade shows, that's something that I always stress to my agents that are helping me run that booth. I'm like, you should 100% never have an empty hand. Something should be in your hands. Uh, something that you can hand to the, the passerby, anything at all. Why do you think, I, I know kind of why I think that's important, but I want to hear you talk about it because I see you, you always have your product in your hand. <laughs> well, number one, let's face it, Tony, we put out a really great product, right? Yes. I mean, this thing is 48 pages, glossy, hard stock, double coated. So if I can get my magazine in your hand immediately, you're going to see, wow, this guy represents a company with a really quality product. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm not quite sure how it works yet. But I'm at least curious, you know, what is this? So it should be the same thing for you with an insurance company, right? You guys represent the most incredible carriers in the world. You're connected with some of the best IMOs in the entire world. They give you just a mad, insane amount of great tools to be able to help you grow your business. Use them. Don't be yeah. afraid of them. Get that stuff in front of people's hands. And, and again, um, the other thing I would tell you, too, is be like you, Tony. You know, you truly are an expert in your business. The number one thing that I recommend to everybody that's on my team is be a student of your business. Truly care about your business. Because if you can put your clients' needs ahead of your needs, I promise the seas open, the blessings come raining down from the sky. You have just all these incredible things that will happen in your life. But none of that happens just by coincidence or accident or anything. It requires work. You got to understand your industry. You got to know what's going on. You got to truly put your feet in the shoes of your clients, understand what they're going through, and then solve those needs to the best of your ability. And that's one of the things I love about our company is, again, we always open up every single meeting with what is our mission? What is our vision, right? Our mm -hmm. vision is we want to make sure that our agents live a life of freedom because you have so much going on in your life. If you have to think for a second on top of everything else that you do, what should I send? When should I send? How often should I send it? How do I stay connected with my clients? How do I connect at a relationship level? How do you do that and process all the thousands of apps, answer all the questions, figure out which conferences to go to, do all these other things? So if I can be there as a resource, first and foremost, to take that heavy load off your work, then the second part of what we do really well, which is, again, in our mission statement, is we want to be able to help our agents close more deals and retain more clients. That's it. That's a pretty great mission statement. Live a life of freedom, close more deals, retain more clients. That's what we do. I know you're big into a vision uh, statement with uh, with what you guys are growing mm -hmm. there. You would never be as successful if you weren't, uh, if you didn't put that ahead of everything else that you do when you first wake up in the morning. I give Absolutely. thanks, give blessings, 
think I'm grateful for everything. And then it's time to go to work. Yeah. Speaking of shoes, do you have, you're on your feet all day long. Do you have any recommendations on great shoes? <laughs> I love floor shine. I always, it's funny. I've got these, uh, I've got these brown floor shimes and every single time I ever put them on, Hey, they're super, super comfortable. But then also people always say, man, your shoes look great. I'm like, really? Not yeah. the seat. <laughs> Nothing else. It's my shoes. All right, that's cool. I like that. And then I also have a backup pair that's uh, the real comfortable ones. If you know, like you say, I know that I'm staying on concrete, right? Because that happens every once in a while. You can't get a pad underneath you. You know, you're going to be standing for eight or ten hours. So yeah, in that case, I'm going to get something that's a little bit more cushy. Absolutely, but absolutely. Shoes do matter. Oddly enough, crazy. <laughs> Well, you said it perfectly, like having to put yourself in your client shoes or your prospect shoes, the things that they're going through, the things that they need. So when I think about that from the the the, the perspective of a Medicare agent, right, working with Medicare beneficiaries in whatever capacity, um, that's 100 percent true. Like you need to have the resources not only in your brain, but on your table in front of you that are going to help answer some of their questions. What is every time someone approaches your booth? Like I said, you are, you have a smile, you're standing up, you're making eye contact with them, even before you know that this person is stopping at your booth or not. Like you're doing your best to give them those silent cues of engagement. Um, what is the first thing that you say most of the time if you meet someone new at your booth? Are you familiar with us? Okay. You know, just real straightforward. You know, we're blessed, right? We work with thousands of insurance agents work with thousands of real estate folks, professionals, work with thousands of financial advisors. So the first thing I want to know is, do you know me, right? Have you, have you seen me? I'm at these events every single year. If, you, if, if, if you've been to this event more than once, how do you not know me? That, that is like almost <laughs> offensive to me. Oh my God, man. How do you not know us, man? Luke Acre's everywhere. Right. Uh, what are we talking about? But if you don't know me, I want to make sure that you'll at least understand what we do to be able to help you stay connected with your most important relationships within 30 seconds. So I've got to have a real smooth, consistent elevator pitch. I don't always want to be switching back and forth. You know, I want to just kind of keep it. So a simple, Hey, are you familiar with us? Do you know, you know what we do helping seniors, you know, obviously navigate these crazy waters to be able to live their best life and make sure that they're connected with the proper carrier, with the proper plan that's going to be able to help you live a happy life and, and a life of freedom, right? So what, however you want to phrase that, I certainly would want to uh, have that part framed up as quickly as possible. Yeah. Because if, if you mentioned, and like you said, if you're at a conference, you know, you got to be able to hit them pretty quick, right? Because they're moving. But same thing, if you're at a grocery store, at a pharmacy, right? You know, they didn't come to see the insurance guy. They came to go get their prescription filled. Mm -hmm. So, all right, cool. Listen, I know you're trying to get your prescription filled. Was that the best, you know, price for that prescription? Did they give you the best prescription? Did you have to rely on something that was generic as opposed to, you know, the, whatever it is, you know? So I, I'd want to have that little part to be able to grab their attention real quick. And then let's face it. They're trying to do other stuff, right? I mean, yeah. Exactly. They want to get the hell out of the store, man. They want to hang out with you for the rest of their life. Same thing at the booth. Most of them, I'll hang out with you all day, all night, Tony. You know that. But in general, most of the time, folks are not really looking to hang out with you. They're not, they want, they don't necessarily want to be your best friend. They want to make sure that you're able to do a good job taking care of their needs and do it quickly and without a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, time spent. So. Certainly. Yeah. I'd say in the context of like an agent in a pharmacy, that should be a quick, simple, very uh, poignant question. And something I would say like something current that's going on. And like, especially if they're in a pharmacy and you see them, they go get their prescriptions and they walk past you. Some of the things that you said were perfect. Um, and, and then again, always have something in your hand, right. That you can trade off with them. So the goal is obviously to get their attention, let them know, Hey, I'm professional. I know what I'm talking about. I piqued your interest. Right. We used to use an expression called pull the string where you'd ask him a question that was that piques a little bit of curiosity. Right. It's like, well, no, I'm, I'm not familiar with you or no, um, I haven't heard about that yet. Or I haven't there's a I haven't heard about this new ruling with the two thousand dollar cost or whatever it might be. And then you have a tool that can back that up. You're basically, you know, in the space of the Medicare world, like you're just trying to get permission to contact them. 
so that you can okay. call them later. So it should be a quick pop. In your situation, you're actually making sales right there at the table from time to time as well. We sure are. Yeah, every time. And, you know, that's another fun thing, too. And I would tell you, I would encourage this um, for anybody. Here's my number one takeaway for you. Get everybody involved in your goal, right? So we do that. Tony, you've seen me do that at every single conference. As soon as I walk in, I'll have 10 people come up to me and say, what's your goal? They're that familiar with the fact that they know when I walk in that building, I have a specific goal and I'm going to do everything I can possibly do to make sure that we hit that goal by the end. So I get people involved, right? Maybe the cashier. Go talk to the cashier. Say, hey, just so you know, my goal today is to get 20 leads from this event. Anything I can do to uh, uh, to help you, give you enough information about what the heck I do here, you know, I really, really would appreciate it. Go to the manager of the place. Hey, listen, just so you know, when I come here, I have a goal. I'm, I'm trying to get 20 hot leads for this AEP so I can help these seniors live a better life. Anything you can do to help me get to that goal, I'd really appreciate same thing. So, you know, Tony, you've been fantastic about that. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, there have been times where I've been like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And because of a Tony, you know, next thing you know, Luke and I are smiling, shooting a little video at the end of the event and uh, build a tribe, you know, get some yeah. people really that do care about you, that want to help you. That's, that's a fantastic statement. Uh, I think that's probably one of the best pieces of advice we've given in this segment so far is that to have a goal when you go into that event. What are you trying to, oh, I'm just going to go man the pharmacy table for six hours a day. Hopefully somebody will come talk to me. Like if that's your attitude, like you're not going to get it done. Number one, <laughs> you're set up for failure immediately unless right. you just get stone cold lucky. But I love what you said, like have a goal. I want 20 leads and get the rest of the people around you involved so that they know um, that's that is excellent because that's going to give you a purpose that you're in there. And then hopefully, if you are motivated, you're going to do all the things that you need to do. Stand up, smile, eye contact, keep your hands full with relevant material that you can put in their hands. Um, Tony, I'll tell you, that's what's uh, just work. As, as, a, as a side note, you know, you can see the, the flag from my father when he mm -hmm. served the service and passed away. Right next to that, I've just realized there's a heavy glare, but that's actually Brian Tracy's goals. And oh. I'll tell you, I have the hard copy of that book. I have it on audio file. This is way back in the year. So I've had this for 20 years, basically. And I will tell you, no matter what you do in life, whether it's the insurance business or just across the board, if you can really put your goals on a piece of paper and stare at those goals, if you can see me right now, I literally have a vision board and it has everything that I'm going to do. And Tony, I share this information with you as much as humanly possible, because again, yeah. I want you to be able, Tony, when you were doing the 5 a.m. club and you were getting up in the morning and you're drinking that crazy green drink that you were drinking and you were doing it every single day, man, you had so many people on your Facebook page, so many people encouraging you. So I would tell you, you know, again, you don't have to, it, it's not a bragging thing. It really is just so that your tribe also understands what you're trying to do. And people are decent, man. People are going to support you in what you do. So, Absolutely. So share some of that stuff. Sorry. Absolutely. And, and I, I see you represent that very well every time I run into you at an event. Like the people that are around you support you. They love you. They care about you. Right. You build great relationships in the industry. So uh, you are definitely that person that uh, that walks the walk, not just talk the talk kind of thing. So uh, Thanks, I, have, I have a huge appreciation for you and what you do. And obviously you guys are big supporters here at the syndicate. Uh, you know, if y'all don't know, if you're missing the Monday show that we put out every Monday in here, it's run by Luke Acre. It's probably, it's probably the best show that we have in all of syndicate content media is every Monday. We have Monday mindset run by Luke. He talks about marketing money and your mindset, right? Got to get your mindset, right? Got your marketing in place so that your money is consistent and that's a big part of his show. Um, but you guys have a phenomenal product. Like I'm a user myself. I use the digital version because that's the only thing available in Spanish so far, uh, which is understandable. I love it. We get leads out of it. We get comments out of it. The best thing that we get is mostly engagement, right? And then we can engage with those people and develop a lead from it. But we do get the occasional straight referral or straight lead that's coming in from the people that we're dripping that on every quarter. Uh, but you guys have a... Uh, hardcover magazine. Joe uses it. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Like, what is that product? Why does it work? Why is it important? 
Awesome. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. So I'll give you the example I've got real close, which is our Start Healthy magazine. That's one of the four magazines that we use to be able to help the agent stay connected with their most important relationship, right? I promise you guys, every single one of your clients that you brought on board, they all know three or five people that you should be working with. But the only way that you can actually truly ask for that referral or engage with these folks where you get a chance to be like, known, and trusted is it starts with how do you treat your existing client, right? Because it really is gold. So our focus is almost always to be able to help you connect with useful content. I'm not telling you that the insurance industry isn't the most exciting thing in the entire world, right? But I promise you that a lot of the product that you guys are sending out, that's great. It's important. What Tony went through this morning, it's incredibly important. But I also want to connect with my clients, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. I want to do stuff that's different than every other agent. So when I send them a magazine with diet, fitness, exercise, useful tools, that's actually customized down to the individual client with Dear Bill and Judy, happy birthday, happy anniversary, connecting at a relationship level. If I can spotlight or highlight maybe an event that I'm gonna do locally, maybe get a picture of me at a client appreciation event on the back cover of the magazine, put a QR code with a landing page at no cost to them on the inside cover. Again, co-brand with that pharmacist, right? We talk a lot about being in an event, a pharmacy, maybe, you know, uh, uh, whatever, CVS or you name it. You know, I'm gonna wanna do everything I can to support them. So why wouldn't I put them on the back cover of the magazine? Hmm. Turn my centers of influence into a raving fan for the business and support them, right? Again, look, the more that you can support the people around you, the easier your whole life becomes immediately. So again, my nature, and it's just my nature, is I'm going to try and give as much as I can to help you first. And then you're going to see that, hey, man, this guy really is, you know, somebody that that I trust because he really does put my needs ahead of his needs every single day. Why wouldn't I help that guy? So again, yeah. in the community, if you're doing, Tony, you guys, you and Grace do so many amazing things in your community. Just imagine featuring, you know, a church or a charity or a foundation that you guys support, putting that in there, or maybe one of your clients, just as another incredible way to showcase all the great things you do in the community. And then at that point in time, why would anybody else work with any other agent? It right. just doesn't make sense. Right. I mean, if, if you've got your photo logo brand information on the cover of the magazine, they go to the pharmacist and they see their pharmacist, their trusted medical professional on the back cover of the magazine. Instant credibility for you. They're associating you with their trusted medical professional. And to be able to do that for less than the cost of a Hallmark card is ridiculous, right? I mean, with the cost of postage going up every single month, Reminder Media being able to give you that tool to, you know, again, get the renewal with your existing base, leverage your relationship with them to be able to get in front of their friends, colleagues, business associates to get like known and trusted for five bucks. Come on, man. Anybody yeah. you send the magazine to, they're exclusive to you. Stop it. What are you doing in your business? If you don't take your business that serious mm -hmm. that you would at least reach out to 50 of your clients every single quarter or every single two months as a thank you. And then just say, Hey, by the way, who's a couple of your friends. I can also send this magazine to, come on, people are good. Rural retroprocity is going to kick in. You're going to build your business. And I, I promise you this, Tony, I'm preaching to the choir. Who would you rather talk to? Do you want to talk to somebody that you just got a lead from somebody that you've never talked to? You have no idea who this person is other than maybe a couple of data points. Or do you want to actually get in front of somebody who you know is a friend of your client who already seen your magazine. So they already like, know, and trust you before you ever have a conversation. If I'm going to sit in front of them, I'm going to win. You said, you said the three words, no, like trust. That's the first thing every insurance agent or every salesperson, regardless of what field you're in, that's the first hurdle that you always have to cross, right? I, I got to figure out a way to get this stranger who doesn't know me to know, like, and trust me. And if I can get through that first piece of friction, then the rest of it is gravy. And you hit it on the head, man. I would always rather talk to a referral 
I would rather talk to an inbound call than someone that is absolutely cold that I don't know anything about. All I know is her name is Sonia. She requested information and there's her <laughs> phone number. That's all I have. Right? <laughs> right. So it's an extremely cold relationship, but no, hundred percent dude. And it, magazines like yours uh, are definitely one of the ways that, to accomplish that. No, like, and trust you hit that on the head. Thank, Thank you for that. You said something else. Like you want to know, uh, uh, you were talking about knowing your clients, knowing your prospects and you, you rattled off four items super fast. You said family, occupation, dreams, and there was something else that I missed. Yes. Yeah, so, so we're really big with acronyms, as you know, from Luke, right? So the Ford method. Ford. If you, so if you can connect with your your clients, family, occupation, recreation, and recreation. dreams. So I'll throw a statistic at you. It's one of my, there's a couple of statistics right now that I think are just mind-blowing. Number one. 44% of clients left their agent because their agent didn't send them meaningful content in the last 16 months. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you think a billing statement is meaningful content, you've lost your freaking mind. <laughs> you're nuts. You have no idea what you're doing. So if you can now, knowing their family, their occupation, recreation, and dreams, and connect with them with those things that are important to your client, they're your client for life, but more importantly, they're a raving fan for your business. The second big statistic that I heard actually at some of the conferences I've been here this year is the fact that 70% of agents this year are going to get shopped. Normally it's 20%, but because of those ANOC layers, because of those CMS changes, 70% of agents are going to get shopped. So think about it, man, if I was going to connect with my client, with something that can actually connect again, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams using Luke's fit method, right? Which is frequency, impact, and trust, right? Again, look, 65 year olds in general, in my opinion, are going to love a magazine. Uh, yep. We'll send out 18 million magazines. And I would tell you that's a prime, prime geographic for the, for this tool, but not everybody is going to connect with a magazine, right? Some people now, as we've seen, Tony, you do a great job talking about this, that folks are actually now, especially retired folks, are using social media much more, mm -hmm. uh, more than ever, right? So here's an exciting thing. If I knew my client was only going to be on social media, I would probably try and connect with them on social media. If I knew my client was only going to be able to, uh, you know, be interested in going to local events that were sent to them professionally, or maybe they only want to text me so I could text them a version of digital version of my magazine to their text. Now, all of a sudden, I'm connecting with them on the frequency. Frequency, not how often, although it is an important part of it, but frequency how. like channel how, what channel do they like the most, right? Then number two, I want whatever my engagement with them to have high impact. That's why we talked about family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. But the ultimate then is to tie both those things in and create more trust like you and I talked about. So that's why, again, our magazine is our number one step forward, but obviously we have all those tools and more to be able to help the agent stay connected to, awesome. again, grow their business. Good stuff. But not spend time doing it, right? I don't right. want to spend a bunch of time. I don't want to spend a bunch of money. I want you guys to be the professional, but I still need to do this stuff. And now more than ever, 70% of you are getting shopped. 70. When you say 70% are getting shopped, I just want to be really clear because I think a lot of agents are probably hearing that and they're thinking secret shopper. Right. You're no, saying, it's... no, no, no. 70% of agents are getting shot because people are looking for change. No, they're looking for just... a better product, better service, better cost, better agent. Yep. And they probably saw the prices go up a little bit more this year. So this was one of those, oh, wait, what's going on? What's happened? Yeah. So now because of that ANOC letter that we just talked about, or because of the fact that they've heard through the grapevine CMS changes, they don't really know what it means. They just know that something's going on in the world. Now's the time I need to find me a new agent that really is going to make sure that I'm not spending as much money. Again, fixed income is very important. So I want to make sure that my dollars are going where they need to go. So because of all of that, they are going to get shopped. You are going to get shopped more this year than you've ever been shopped. Historically, 20% of your clients were shopping you. This year, it jumps to 70%. I'm hearing that at multiple conferences coming from very important uh, recognized authorities in your industry. So that is yeah, a yeah. fact. Guys. I haven't heard that specific stat, but I did read uh, in a research paper from Deft Research 
Uh, they kind of keep their finger on the pulse of the Medicare and, and ACA industry, so to speak. But they had made a comment that uh, that in previous years, the average uh, number of beneficiaries, Medicare beneficiaries that change their plan during the annual election period is only 11 percent. And I I thought that was low. Like when I saw that number at first, I was like, well, that's kind of low. You know, I would think more people do maybe more people shop, but they just don't make as many changes. So they were saying, hey, only 11 percent of people from year to year change their Medicare plans. But then they followed that up and they said, because of all of the stuff going on this year, that 48 percent of people not only will be shopping, but will need to change their plan. So if 40, and so that fits in perfect with what you're saying. If 48%, if they believe that 48% are not going to be in the right plan for them and they will have to make a plan change, whether it be because of a plan exit or just overall plan changes, and that fits in perfect with your statement that 70% of that marketplace is going to be shopping you. That's a 400%. Whether they're shopping against you or they're shopping to you against someone else. Yeah, that's a, but what does that mean, right? Everybody will hear this statistic and go, oh man. Uh, yes, I do need to stay connected with my clients because it's more important. And this is a terrible thing. What this is telling you guys is this is your opportunity to capture market share. Yeah. I promise you there are people who are less professional than the Tony Merwins and the Joes out there uh, that really and truly don't grasp it and don't have that mindset. That should be your mindset. Oh, my God. This is the greatest opportunity in my lifetime. Seven $70 trillion going from the baby boomer generation to the next generation. If you sell multiple products, you sell an annuity product, that means this is the greatest time in your lifetime to actually be an agent. Again, 10 to 12,000 people, depending on who you talk to or what statistical organization it, it, that you're, you're getting your information from, it really doesn't matter. This is the uh, one of the largest numbers of population that is turning 65 right this second. So 100%. every single day, 12,000 people, and they control more money than ever. Mm -hmm. So what an incredible opportunity for you guys across the board to grow your business. And you are brilliant for being on this podcast because this guy, Tony Merwin, knows more about this industry than I, I would ever hope or dream to know. Well, I appreciate you taking time on the show where we're coming up at the top of the hour. So uh, for those out there that are listening and, and paying attention, man, if they want to get in touch with Andrew, they want to pick your brain a little bit, maybe uh, see what Reminder Media and your magazines and something, because y'all don't just do the magazine. You guys do all kinds of stuff. Magazine's kind of the centerpiece. Somebody wants to chat with you, see what uh, you know you can do to help them grow their business. What's the best way to get in contact with Mr. Andrew Saxa? You can go right to ReminderMedia.com to learn about us. Uh, again, Stay Paid Podcast. Go check out that podcast as well. Tony's been there. Um, great, great, great content. Um, but you can also reach me on my direct line, 484-804-2963. It's my direct line. I answer all calls. And uh, thank you, Tony. I really appreciate this, man. This is so much fun. You know I do love you more than just about anybody in this whole industry. So to be able to get a chance to do this with you is a thrill. Well, you're one of my favorites. You know, like I said, I mean, there was that period uh, where I was at 26 <laughs> events and you were at every event. And so we kept just connecting and connecting and connecting. And we have a lot in common and we had some fun. I know we definitely had some fun in Georgia together as well. Uh, but I look forward to dumping some Tito's and cranberry on your head again at the next <laughs> Medicarians event. Let's go. Uh, can't wait for it. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on the show, man, and taking some time. I appreciate you. Um, I know I'll bump into you here soon enough at some event. We'll cross paths. Uh, but, man, if you're out there listening to the show, thank you all for tuning in. Give this guy a call. Check him out. Uh, and then check out, you know, the Monday show. I've already told you all. It's easily the best show that we put out in the syndicate, in my opinion. You know, I still want you to come watch my show, but make sure you're not missing out on Luke Acre's Monday Mindset. It is easily one of the best ways to start your week. So, and Thank Joe on Wednesday, some Joe Campert on Wednesday too. Love me some Joe. Absolutely. And uh, we got a great show for you next week. We're going to have a gentleman on named Dan Metcalf. He is going to be talking about cybersecurity for the insurance agent. So it's going to be very, very poignant for you guys. So tune into that one. Thanks again and have an awesome, awesome week out there.